Hey everyone, if you're anything like me, you've played a lot of single player story driven games, especially this past year. However, sometimes you don't want to have to focus on a story for multiple hours. Sometimes you just want to play something that's relaxing to pass the time as you slouch on your couch, binge watching media content. Sometimes you only want to play for 20 minutes before bed without needing to go searching for a save point. If any of that sounds like something you might be looking for in a game, then I have 5 suggestions that might help you stay entertained while being stuck at home. And while yes, I know I should include Animal Crossing on this list, the game has sold so well this year, I figured it's a game that doesn't need repeating. If you enjoy this video, be sure to click the like button, and if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe if you want to watch more videos like this. And don't be shy to let me know what games you've put a ridiculous amount of hours into during lockdown by letting me know in the comments below. Tetris 99 is a simple concept. It's Tetris. I don't think I have to explain Tetris to you. But what makes this version great is the fact you have opponents. When they first disclosed this game, a lot of people didn't think it would work, or didn't understand how it would work. However, the game is ridiculously addictive. You lose the same way as normal Tetris, by having your Tetraminos reach the top of the screen. The main goal, however, is to be the last surviving player. There's multiple ways to achieve this, some easier than others. You can focus on being aggressive and getting KOs, or you can focus on being defensive and blocking garbage being sent to you. Either way, you will end up doing both, but timing of when you try to attack versus trying to block can make a huge difference. Every time you clear a line, or multiple lines, they get sent as garbage lines to whichever opponent or multiple opponents you're targeting. And if you're being targeted by an opponent, then you will receive the garbage lines they send. When you kill an opponent, you get a badge. The more badges you have, the stronger your attacks will be. Two lines of garbage sent can actually be four lines received by your opponents, depending on your badges buff. You have four different ways of targeting opponents. Randomly, which gives you zero control on your attacks. Attackers, so you attack anyone who is targeting you. KOs, which sends the attack to whoever is closest to losing. And badges, which targets the player who has the most kills. You can increase your odds of winning by understanding when you should switch your targeting tactics to get more badges, and therefore increasing the strength of the lines you send to people. However, understanding how to clear your lines to defend is just as important. Because if you can't stay alive, it won't matter if you've knocked out 10 opponents. With such an addicting core game, and adding features to keep it from getting stale, this game is easily the game I would pick up to play for 20 minutes before bed. It also has some of the best Tetris music I've ever heard. It changes as you make it into the last 50 players in your lobby, and again at the final 10. And it builds the intensity to such a frantic level. Again, using the same basic core music, and adding features to keep it from getting stale, it's just a masterclass of design choices. There's also new themes that can be unlocked during special events, which are themed after your favorite Nintendo series, as well as daily challenges and full achievement lists to keep you playing and continuously giving you something to strive for. The thrill and intensity of this game is something I almost never feel in gaming. Being in the top two for a three minute fight with another player is the type of feeling and adrenaline inducing gameplay that very few games can achieve. If you manage to get a victory, you unlock Invictus Mode, an area for winners only. The speed starts quite fast, and by the end, it's basically instant drops, so you absolutely need to be able to read your board and the lineup of upcoming pieces. The issue is so few people play Invictus Mode, so the vast majority of the players are CPUs. I currently have over 200 hours into Tetris 99, and I still play 1-2 to two games every day because it's so enjoyable. The game can be overwhelming at first, but if you already subscribe to the Switch Online, the game is a free download, so you can try it for an afternoon and give it a shot. Mario 35 was created in the exact same style as Tetris 99, with similar concepts of how to attack opponents. This game can seem fairly similar to Tetris 99 at first, but don't be fooled. These are extremely different games. Almost no strategies can be used across both games for success. This is a game where you play the original Mario Bros game, and as you kill enemies, they get sent to your opponents, and vice versa. However, the level select really changes things. In Tetris 99, it's the same layout nonstop, with the speed changing as you progress. However, in Mario 35, 4 levels in, you can be playing any level from the game. There is no regular increase in difficulty, which allows for totally different strategies to stay alive. Combine that with the random item roulette to get you out of a jam, and the in-game timer and survival might be the better strategy versus aggression. 
You can play levels that have warp pipes or vines that your opponents don't know about and bypass difficult sections or levels entirely and while they're struggling against a barrage of bullet bills, you're running across the clouds in 2-1. If you can keep your timer high by defeating enemies in difficult ways and you've amassed a surplus of coins, you can outlast your opponents. In Tetris 99, you need to be responsible for knocking out opponents, especially at the end. But in Mario 35, you can be hitting a coin block while they fall into a pit and you can win with zero KOs. If you're relatively new to retro games or haven't played Mario in over 20 years, it can be a nice nostalgic trip with the intensity of modern gaming. If you play Mario a lot and know all the secrets, getting to later levels and sending Lakitu's or multiple Bowsers can be a great way to overwhelm your opponents. You will end up playing the first few levels on a very regular basis, which for some people can get stale very fast. However, random enemy placement from the enemies sent by opponents can make even the first level extremely tricky, and it creates a new experience for the same levels you've seen hundreds of times. This game is also free, just like Tetris 99, as long as you're a subscriber to the Switch Online service. However, Mario 35 was announced to be leaving the service by the end of March 2021, so you might as well give it a try for a couple of months, otherwise you might never get the chance to play it. Currently, I've played over 40 hours of Mario 35, and just like Tetris, I still play this game every day to try and complete the daily challenges, and I recently unlocked the final icon. There is also a small easter egg where you can play as Luigi, assuming you've accomplished a certain goal or two. If you're looking for a fun take on a nostalgic game, this could be perfect for you. I wasn't sure how to classify this next entry. Playing board games against computers or online against friends can be a great way to pass the time during quarantine. Since it's been so long since many of us have seen our family or friends, having a communal game to play with multiple people is absolutely necessary. Personally, I played a lot of Ticket to Ride, as it was free with Xbox Game Pass for the majority of 2020. Sadly for myself, the game recently was taken off the service, and while it is possible to purchase the game through the store, there are a multitude of options you can choose. Not everyone likes the same style of board games, but the concept of board games on a console is the same regardless of the game you choose. Talking it over with people in your life, you can choose any board game you want, and it helps with non-gamers being able to participate. I have recently purchased Clubhouse games on the Switch. So far, I have only tried local play against the CPU, but it does have online play. You can play classic games like chess or air hockey against friends or strangers online. From what I've tried so far, the game looks nice, plays great, and has a vast array of games to choose from, 51 in total. There's something for everyone. There's also different skill levels for the CPU, so if it's a game you've never heard of, you don't have to worry. There is a how to play and easy level for most games, and as you learn what you're doing, you can change the difficulty accordingly. One of the most popular game styles that people seem to always go back to is the online shooter. Team-based or battle royale, it doesn't really matter. What matters is the style you prefer. Do you prefer weapon-based or class-based? Do you prefer cover shooter or run and gun? Just like board games, this is subjective to the style you prefer. And while the past month or so I've really gotten into Splatoon 2 and recently participated in my first Splatfest, the majority of the year was spent in one game on one map. Call of Duty a franchise played by millions. It always has a tremendous amount of players online at any given moment. However, the version I play isn't one that's talked about very often anymore. To me, Call of Duty World War II is the best Call of Duty in recent memory. I haven't tried Cold War yet, but I do prefer World War II over any of the others. Personally, the feel of the game, with the weapons and classes, makes the game just that much more enjoyable for myself. But the main thing is, shipment 24-7. This map is chaos, and it's a blast every time. Yes, I know there is shipment in Modern Warfare, but it's usually jumbled with Rust or Shoot House or some of the other maps. And I just want shipment nonstop. Playing the same map over and over again can get repetitive for some, but personally, it's probably the game that allows me to play it purely on instincts. I can turn off my brain and let my reactions do all the work. If you want it to be a little different every time, you can do contracts, which are daily or weekly challenges, which can force you to change your gameplay. It can force you to use a weapon you don't enjoy or an attachment you wouldn't normally choose. The game also has a lot of different prestiges for you to try and achieve. Now, the rewards for doing all this aren't really anything to strive for, in my opinion, 
But if you want all the weapon variants to all the emotes and emblems, this game has hours upon hours of gameplay to keep you entertained. When quarantine first started, there was an important date coming up in the video game calendar. March 20th, 2020 not only saw the release of one of my most anticipated games of the year, Doom Eternal, it saw the release of one of the best-selling Switch games, Animal Crossing New Horizons. While seemingly everyone played Animal Crossing that day, I actually started a different game on March 20th. I started Stardew Valley. This is easily the game I played the most in 2020. With 300 hours in Pelican Town across two farms, I managed to get my fill of a simulated regular life. With farming, fishing, mining, and everything else the game has to offer, the experience is so peaceful and relaxing. Knowing there's unlimited days in the game, and being stuck at home in real life, you could spend multiple in-game days chopping down trees and reorganizing your shed without ever leaving your land, completely ignoring everything else the game has to offer. If you want a completionist task, you could focus on catching the legendary fish, or focus on finding the artifacts for the museum, there's always something to do. The pace of the game is entirely up to the player. The graphics look pretty nice, and the amount of content, especially if you try to complete everything, is impressive. From trying to be friends with everyone and eventually getting married if you desire, to fighting your way through the Skull Cavern, it can take a while, but it's entirely up to you if you want to focus on those aspects for your farm. If you want to play the game solely as a design game, you can. If you don't care about having the best weapon, but you care about having the layout of your farm a certain way, that's entirely up to you. You can spend all game raising chickens and pigs or growing the best crops and not talking to any townsfolk. It allows you to live your in-game life however you desire. While some features will be stuck behind a basic story of become friends with someone and they'll teach you a new cooking recipe or something along those lines, you can pick and choose what you want to unlock next and focus your gameplay solely on achieving that goal. The online co-op for the game works extremely well. One of my farms is a combined farm with two friends, and it works seamlessly with no connectivity issues. I know it's not a very taxing game for the system, but having the Switch Online work well across three people is great, and having the three of us playing online working towards a common goal is a fun experience. One person can stay on the farm and grow and water crops, while another goes to the mines, and the third person goes fishing all day, or however you decide. The game is consistently getting new updates, keeping it from getting stale. As I record this, on PC, update 1.5 is out and adding a lot of new content. Personally, I'm waiting for the update to hit consoles, and I will start a brand new farm again, this time on the Xbox One. I originally bought the game digitally on the Switch, and then I found a collector's edition at a flea market for the Xbox One. Most recently, I heard the Switch was getting its own big box collector's edition. This is a game I enjoyed so much, I had to triple dip on the game. The Switch collector's edition came with a wooden standee, a comic book, and a deed to the land. I also ordered the guidebook, which is extremely informative. It contains every NPC's likes and dislikes, every fish location, how to obtain every mineral, and so much more. It's an incredibly well put together collector's edition and book. Everyone has different tastes in video games, and different ideas that they're looking for in a video game. But I hope I showed you guys enough different styles of games that if you're ever bored at home, maybe you saw something that intrigued you. Maybe you saw a game you never really considered trying before. Maybe you saw a game that might cure the boredom of being stuck at home. Thanks for staying until the end, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to click the like button and subscribe for more content. And don't be shy to tell me down in the comments which games you've been playing non-stop during quarantine, and if you plan on trying out any of the games I talked about. Thanks for watching.